Good day and welcome back, movie readers. Today, I have a Robocop by Ed. Oh no, not that Ed. Ed Nahar. Ha 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 ha. Yep, that's the way how you pronounce it. Ed Nahar. So here it is, Robocop, the future of law enforcement. Based on the screenplay by Edward Numier and Michael Milner. There are a few editions of this. My one being the second reprint from Corgi Books in the UK. Came out reprinted in uh, 1998. There is also a US edition which was published in 1987 in July by Dell Books. This one has the white border and also a different typeface. Uh, this sort of being a reddish coloured uh, comic book typeface for the title. Subsequent reprints would of course feature the, uh, the typeface font that we all come to know. The US version is a white back with white titles. Uh, this one being the UK one has yellow. This book runs a little bit short at 189 pages. A little bit too short in my opinion, but Nahar does a very good job with uh, quick details and brevity, so we don't lose much. Nahar is a screenwriter who started out with Roger Corman. Robocop is his first novelization. He was given four months to write this, most of it written before the principal filming had even begun. So there are several differences um, from this, including the ending from the final film. Based on an early draft screenplay, Robocop's dialogue sounds more human um, from the outset, but overall there is more connective dialogue and scenes. Although this novel was completed before filming, Nahar appears to have seen casting photos and descriptions of most of the characters. So now I'll explain some of the differences from the film. So, spoiler alert people, if you haven't seen the film, don't watch my movie. Thank you. So in the, the initial news reports are missing from the start, and instead we start off with Alex Murphy's background. His father's death, and we're treated to his home life with his son Jimmy and his wife Jan. The second chapter covers the story of how Fredrickson and Connors die, the two police who were murdered, who are only mentioned in the film when their lockers are being cleared out when Alex Murphy first arrives. We also get a deeper understanding of the politics as to why the, uh, there is no funding for the police, which is covered in a conversation between Jones and the old man. I also noticed that the handguns in, this film, in the book are a lot different. For example... Kinney has a revolver, Magnum revolver, instead of a Desert Eagle in the Ed 209 scene. And Kinney's death is far quicker. Not the protracted blasting we see in the film, but instead a quick burst of fire which tears him apart. Also, Ed 209 has also a soothing voice, as opposed to the sort of growling, menacing one that he has in the final film. It is mentioned in the film that Ed 209 doesn't hear the gun drop, and the reason given in the book is because the carpet pile in the boardroom is too thick for him to actually hear the gun drop on the floor. Officer Lewis is described as being single and owning a cat, as well as both her and Murphy carrying Mataba revolvers as opposed to the automatic pistols that we see in the film. Murphy's death scene is covered in its full glory and gory. We are then treated to the moments where he is gradually changed into a machine and his subsequent return to becoming Mur Alex Murphy again. He is rather like a patient who's on a life support machine, whose memories are gradually returning to him. He wanders around in a zombie-like state, trying to work out whether or not that what he is witnessing is actually reality, or whether it's a memory. In the book, we also learn of the name of the TV show. Yes, that famous TV show in the film, which is actually called It's Not My Problem. And apparently the name of the guy in the film, in the TV show, is called Bixby Snyder. Also, the liquor store scene is quite different from the film, which also includes a kid stealing Snickers bars and also ends up um, becoming a hostage. The rape scene also differs with Robocop ricocheting a bullet off the wall instead of uh, shooting the assailant through the skirt and disabling the man from ever committing that crime ever again. Instead, the ricochet scene would crop up again in Robocop 2. We also get a sense of time passing, um, from the moment of Murphy's death to the news of the Robocop's rescue of the mayor, which incidentally is about two months. The news report is also explained as being watched by um, Murphy's son Jimmy, and also his wife Jan, as they prepare to leave their home for a colony on the moon. 
The full names of Clarence Boddicker's gang also differ from what we see on the screen in the film, thus further revealing that Nahar worked with a much earlier script. We also discover that Bob Morton owns a Siamese cat, which Clarence Boddicker, possibly out of character from what we see in the final film, rescues the cat from the same fate as Bob. The nightclub scene is missing from the book, and instead has a scene with Robocop threatening a gang of kids um, to find out the location of the drug factory, and whether or not they know one of the gang members, Chan Orland, who ended up becoming Steve Min in the film. And now I can settle an age-old conundrum of what year this film was meant to be set. In the novel, Sylvester Stallone is reported on the news as dying at the grand age of 97. Sly, being born in 1946, we can now work out with a little bit of simple maths that this film was in fact set in 2043. The showdown at the abandoned factory differs by quite a fair amount. Emil, Emil's death remains the same, but all the others vary, including Joe being savaged by a, gat, by a dog and Clarence having his head smashed and pulverised by Robocop. Can't help but notice that the initial script was rather inferior to what we had in the final film and that the right decisions were made to change the action scenes. I'm pleased the decision to make Robocop more robotic in the final film, because in the novel he comes across as far too human. He also even does a Popeye impression whilst carrying out his own repairs on himself, which just came across as a bit too much. Anyway, that's all I've got time for for now. Please remember to comment below, especially if you own this book. I'll be interested to hear what you think as well. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>